Uba Paul Lingdo, Mentri Katanat Kikam Jungokai, Perte, Abapanshai, Kajinkli, Jung Nong Tao Ai, and Kanot Shlong Constituency. Uba Adelbert Nong Rum, Hagador Bar Sandra, Jung Kasnito Ding, Arpo Artery Unailur, Arhajar, Arpo Lai. Baga Jinkpen Long, Yakatamasa, Cherry Blossom, Na E Kapisa Kawan, Bat Kumno, La Jupen Lut Yaka, Namar Kadega Tamasa, Kabakta, Yakaplat and Ka. Uba Paul Kumu Mentri, La Jubam. Baga jingpen long ika tamasa ka day lingba ka sanjok bala jupen long yaka. Uba adal ba lula geliru da kumno la penlut haki jinglek syangri syabari bat ki e ki jing mentoy lingba kite ki kam syangri yok lese kin long tang ki kam penserwa kai yaka yok kakot haka jela. Uba pol lula juba baga jingdon jong kate ka tamasa ka long shibenta ban kentiw bat ban penyok rensan syakiriw dan sam ka long ru ka lat ban kentiw ki kam jongok kai perthay Klem da khen na kino kino ki dostur, bat ki benta ba ki wan, bat ki wei ki wei ki jing mentoy. Utayu menteri ula pensyairu ba menta usnam shwa ban rai ban penlong ikata masa cherry blossom, la yok jing minjur shwa naka dorbar mang tengka, jong ka ying dorbar tau ayin baladem, jong usnam ar hajar ar paulai, bat ka tei kata masa la mang haka jing lun, ka balong i wei poin kandai pa kandai kelur tengka, bat ki wei ki jing lut kelum kinlong, Pra poin sao po kandai kelur tengka bat lakmi ilanti bana ka jingde yaki tiket kan mi ka pisa kumba nreu poin kandai po kandai kelur tengka. Video submission. For allow me to move this uh, zero hour. Uh, thank you Mr. Speaker sir for allowing me to uh, bring this uh, zero hour to raise a matter of grave importance on the rules 49A. We can see that Meghalaya tourism has released attractive publicity projecting Shillong Sherry Blossom Festival 2023 to be a grand mega entertainment with a sequence of events, including Road to Cherry Blossom, to be held at India and Thailand from 1st to 30th October, and Mega Music Contest on 17th November with an international lineup of headlining act, including Ronan Keating. So, I am all for music, art, culture and youth, which the public city display. But the question that this zero hour matter brought before the house back is, where is the money going to come from to organize events of such magnitude? So Cherry Blossom finds small mention in the budget speech presented in the House earlier this year. Only at one paragraph where government declares support to tourism festival and events. Cherry Blossom again is nowhere found on the key announcement in government release. Highlights of budget 23-24 and with no indication of fund outlay in the budget estimates earmark for tourism sector. So, with no budgetary allocation originally voted by the Assembly, it would be expected that amount to defray charges for organizing Cherry Blossom Festival, which is undoubtedly the biggest government promoted event of the year, would therefore figure in the supplementary demands for grants move during this autumn session. <clears throat> but again, I found nowhere does expenditure on tourism events figure in any of the 25 numbers of supplementary demand. <clears throat> so, so I want to know from the humble uh, honorable minister in charge tourism, how exactly the government plans to bangle the super ambitious project, which strangely 
includes months-long pre-events to be held in exotic Thailand. Please care to explain to this House what is the proof budget for the entire sequence of events. May I repeat? Please <clears throat> care to explain to this House what is the approved budget for the entire sequence of events and from where will the state arrange the funds. So, also, I want to know from the Honorable Chief Minister in charge finance whether our state is in a healthy financial position to pull off an entertainment spectacle like how Sherry Blossom Festival is publicized and will equal attention and funding be given to indigenous festival that preserve traditional culture. So with these very few words, Mr. Speaker, sir, I once again thank you for allowing me this zero hour to raise a matter of grave importance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I'll resume my seat. Mr. Speaker, sir, at the outset, uh, let me thank the mover of this very important zero hour discussion, Adelbert Nongo, honorable member from Shillong North. I would like to clarify here that the arrangement of funds by the tourism department to organize the Road to Cherry Blossom Festival at India and at Thailand from the 1st to the 30th of October this year, and the Cherry Blossom Mega Music Contest on the 17th of November. So at the core of Meghalaya's distinctive identity lies its warm and hospitable people. The people of Meghalaya are renowned for their deep-seated passion for music and the unique cultural heritage. This fervor for music permeates every facet of life in the state and is celebrated with unparalleled enthusiasm throughout the year. With its picturesque landscapes, rich cultural heritage, and the resounding rhythms of its music, Meghalaya rightfully earns its title as the rock capital of India or rather the music capital of India. Festivals serve as a potent branding tool for Meghalaya, positioning the state as a welcoming tourist destination and sparking positive conversations on a global scale. The Cherry Blossom Festival in particular has gained national and international recognition, symbolizing the state's charm. So the organization of these festivals serves multiple crucial purposes. Firstly, they provide a platform to local artists and musicians to showcase their talents alongside renowned national and international artists, nurturing local creativity and fostering cultural exchange. Secondly, they cater to the demands of tourists by offering unique and unforgettable cultural experiences, significantly boosting tourism in the state. Thirdly, they serve as powerful instruments for state branding, elevating Meghalaya's global profile as a cultural and artistic hub. Sir, it is in recent years, festivals and events have become integral elements of state tourism strategies across the country. States like UP, Goa, Haryana, Sikkim, Nagaland, Assam, Arunachal Pradesh have recognized events and festivals as essential components of their tourism development strategy. Events like the Ladakh Festival, Sunb Sunburn Festival in Goa, the Suraj Kun Mela in Haryana, Hornbill Festival in Nagaland are a few that we can mention as events sponsored by the respective governments. I would also like to inform 
members of this August House that in this year's Cherry Blossom Festival, in addition to the mega music contest aimed at nurturing and launching local talent into the music industry, we will also be organizing a choir competition to provide a platform for local choirs and vocal groups to showcase their musical prowess, creativity, and harmonious talents. It's an opportunity for these talented groups to gain recognition and appreciation from both local and visiting audiences. So the impact of these events has been significant. The last Cherry Blossom Festival in 2021 attracted approximately 45,000 attendees, of which at least 30% were tourists, equating to more than 10,000 tourists in three days. Similarly, the Megong Festival hosted last year drew a crowd of 3.5 lakh crowd. According to data available with the department, a substantial portion of the tickets sold in 2022 were purchased by tourists. Moreover, virtually all available accommodations were fully booked during the festival period, generating additional revenue for the hospitality industry of the state, in addition to the income earned by locals through setting up of stalls, food counters, transportation services, and so on. I'd also like to make a mention that these festivals are not entirely funded by the government of Meghalaya, but are financed through a combination of funds secured through ticket sales and corporate sponsorships. To provide context, last year we secured funds through ticket sales amounting to 1.25 crores before the festival, ticket sales alone. Additionally, we received corporate sponsorships of 1 crore. This year, we anticipate securing funds through ticket sales of up to 2 crores, depending on the lineup of performers. And the curtain raiser, which the member had made a mention of, both nationally and internationally, are aimed at increasing the ticket sales and to attract high-value tourists. Mr. Speaker, sir, the uh, honourable member had wondered as to how, what was the source of financing this particular festival. I would like to highlight, sir, that an amount of 7.5 crores to meet the expenditure for these various festivals came under expenditure head 104. Expenditure head 104. Since the member wanted to know as to where did the source of funding came from. It came from expenditure head 104, promotion and publicity of festivals, which received approval from this house during the budget session of March this year. The costs associated with these events will be covered under this budget head, and therefore there is no need for any supplementary demand, separate SD to be placed, since this was already voted and received the approval of this House in March this year. Sir, the amount sanctioned for the Cherry Blossom Festival 2023 is 1.99 crore. The expected expenditure is 8.49 crores. The deficit of 6.99 crores is targeted to be met through ticket sales and corporate sponsorship. I would repeat that the amount sanctioned for this Cherry Blossom Festival 2023 is Rs 1.99 crore, whereas the expected expenditure is 8.49 crores. Therefore, the, the deficit of 6.99 crore is targeted to be met through ticket sales and corporate sponsorship. With the above information, I hope I have been able to clarify 
the issues raised by the Honourable Member.